they had given me a shoebox that I wasn't allowed to open until I'd finished doing all the reading. So the... the okay, so it was like a sealed little box. Yeah, they wrapped read. up with newspapers and they had all this huge homework assignment. So it was actually two weeks after the original date that I was supposed to join the church that I was finally finished to all my all this homework assignment. Yeah. But I'd, I'd always join the church a week now. And so I was able to open it up and it was a bag of chocolate chip cookies with a note that said, you've not only gained... A bag of chocolate chip cookies, but you gained a testimony for whatever you in this space. Hello, guys. Welcome back to Saints Unscripted. Today, we're here with a very special guest, Stephen. Welcome to the show. Nice to be here. Uh, I've been told that you've been watching for quite some while. Yep. I've been watching uh, Saints Unscripted since it was three Mormons. I don't know if I caught the oh, very gee. first episode, but... Uh, I really like the work that you do, and I, and I appreciate the work that you guys do. Thank you so much. Well, today we're here to hear your conversion story. Okay. Uh, so to start off, just tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are, and all that stuff before we jump in. Okay. Well, my name is Stephen. I was born and raised in Quebec City, a French part of town. And uh, I, uh, it's one of the best cities, I think, in all of North America. If you've never had a chance to go to Quebec City, it's like walking through old Europe. Really? And it's really, oh. it's a bucket list place for people to go. Right. You say it's the French part. Do you speak French? Or? Yeah, yeah. We're really? the only ones. We're the only ones that basically speak English in all my clan because my dad married an English person, and that was like about it. On était des Québécois français, nous autres là, c'est juste du français. Les les tantes, mon oncle, les cousines, everybody, it's just. Oh, you no comprendre. Some of the, some of my relatives <laughs> now speak more English, but when I was growing up, it was not much. So you said you served a mission. Right. You had your twenty fifth birthday in the MTC. Correct. That's cool. Um. So you converted sometime before then. So when I was about 22 and a half, I had moved. When I was 21 years old, I moved from Quebec City to Ottawa, Gatineau, and I was going to college there. And that's when I met the missionaries. And uh, I have to tell you, okay, long story short. <sighs> My viewpoint on religion was that, no offense to anybody, but I really felt bad for anybody who believed in God. Mm -hmm. I honestly, I didn't mock anybody, but I couldn't understand why anybody would believe in this and uh, nobody could ever explain something properly to me when I was growing up and even at a very young age very very young age I remember thinking this is not fair there's things about that we were being taught that I thought well that's not fair but then when I read Moroni chapter 8 I was like uh-huh <laughs> read this this is exactly what I've been saying so um stuff like that so uh, one day the missionaries uh, came to my door but they came in and uh, they had this thing back then in the Canada Montreal mission where they were like introducing themselves, saying, we're here to explain to people why we're called Mormons and what it is we do as missionaries. And it was like a 15 minute presentation. And so they took a piece of paper and, and they, basically what I like about this was that they set the ground rules for that during our visits. Uh, there's going to be, we're not going to Bible bash. We're not going to argue. They want to know my point of view on things. They want, know, they want to know what concerns I had about religion, if they can resolve them. But they had a cutoff date, which is what I really like. They said, if we can see you once a week, six weeks, we'll be out of your hair. Well, you'll either join the church or we'll part ways. If we can see you twice a week, in three weeks' time, we'll either, you'll either be joining the church or we'll shake our hands and part ways. They set those ground rules. So I thought, okay. Good for them. Yeah, yeah I, think I, I could do that. this. I, I thought there's no way I'm going to do six weeks, but I took out my schedule from college and I said, uh, I could see you twice a week. I'm okay. Let's do this. Yeah. And in the discussions that we had that very first 15 minutes, they set the ground rules, which is what I appreciated. Um, one of the things that, so they explained what the Book of Mormon is about and, and how Mormon translated like all their history and put it into a condensed book. And that's mm -hmm. why we're called Mormons. But really it's just another testament of Jesus Christ. And then um, they explained what they do as missionaries. And one of the things that they did was, you know, they did a little picture of a stick figure and they put X's all around it. And just the Bible alone, there's so many different religions that follow the Bible. Mm -hmm. So if we were to ask our neighbors, the Catholic priest, and say, Mr. Catholic priest, sir, which church should I be following? What is he going to tell you? Catholic church. And if we see our, our Baptist neighbors, which church should we be following? The Baptists. And if we talk our, to our neighbors that are atheists, right. And if you ask the Mormon missionaries, which church should we be following? What are they going to tell you? Yeah. The Mormon church. So... The position of missionaries, they understand that us as investigators, you guys are just another brick in the wall to us. You're just, that's it. So we talked a bit about how everybody claims to be, have the truth. We talked about, about where to find truth. Uh, we talked about prayer. And then we talked about homework. 
And if I was willing to do my homework, because let's say one of the examples that was used was if your child says, do you want me to be happy and successful? Oh, yeah. You'd say yes, yeah. right? Yeah. So if your child says to you, well, can you do my homework for me? I'm going to go to the movie with my friends. That way I can be both happy and successful. So as a parent, you say what? Ain't no way nah. I'm doing your homework. No way. No. No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No. 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 So the next day, your kid comes home from school and they're doing the homework because you didn't do it. And so let's think about it. And after some time, they ask for help. As a parent, what do you do? You help, help them out. So explain to me the difference now, not the night before. Well, they put in the effort that time. You know, they... They, they tried. They tried. Yeah. That's Nothing because, wrong with a little help. Because you understand that to know as an eternal truth. You can't do somebody else's homework for them. Mm -hmm. That's an eternal truth that we can pretty much all agree upon. Mm -hmm. And so they challenged me that if I was willing to do my homework, and the homework was to read, to pray, to come to church to see for myself, and to have the discussions. Back then, there was six set discussions. Now it's a bit more freelance. And so um, I said, sure, let's do it. And so I, the first set of homework they gave me, they gave me a piece of paper, and here's your homework assignment. And it was the introduction to the Book of Mormon, Third Nephi, The Promise, and to start praying. So that night, so I said to myself, okay, I'm, I'm going to do this. And a part of me was like, you're going to do everything they ask you. Because in three weeks' time, you'll be able to look at them straight in the eye and say, well, thank you very much. It was interesting, but goodbye. <laughs> because I didn't want them to say to me, well, it didn't work because you didn't do your prayers. It didn't work because you didn't do your reading. It didn't work because mm -hmm. you, you didn't hold your end of the bargain. So yeah. I was going to do anything they asked. the work in, yeah. Couldn't care less. It's, there's no harm in doing it. And uh, so that was, my, that was my intention. So that night, I did my reading. And true to form on my knees, said my prayer, and I felt completely ridiculous. I had the most overwhelming sensation of just, just what a fool. Just absolutely, I couldn't get over that they, I was like, oh my gosh, what are you doing? You're on your knees by your bed, talking to the wall. Uh, this is ridiculous. And it was, it was, when I say an honest to goodness, overwhelming feeling of ridicule, I, I had trouble describing it. I get emotional sometimes because it's just, it's exactly what I felt. So I went to bed and I was like, well, this, this is not a total loss because I was agnostic, and, you know. And so the next day they came for their very first discussion. And I told them, it's not a total loss. And I said, something came out of this. I said, I used to think I was agnostic, like I told you. Now I know I'm atheist. And they were like, excuse me. And I was like, well, because I'm pretty sure that if you're praying to know if God is there, that the experience that I had should not have happened. So I was then even convinced that, nah, this is ridiculous. But I'm going to hold it to the third week. Okay. And they, they, they reminded me. They were like, you know, <laughs> we have a cutoff date in three weeks. I said, yep, yeah, no, nope, we'll do this. And so uh, the following day, the following, so they did, that was the day after the first visit. And then when they came for the second discussion, they had a shoebox wrapped up with just chapters and chapters and chapters of reading. Like they jacked up my homework assignment. <laughs> like they, they jacked up the homework assignment so much so. So I kept up with the discussions. I had a, a bunch of questions. Uh, they had to resolve a lot of concerns. But I was impressed with what they were saying. Like the plan of salvation, that was impressive. Like um, logically it sounded good. Like Well, it covered all the bases. Yeah. It covered all the bases. When you grow up and you're being told that you have to baptize your children, because otherwise if you don't, they're in a bad position. And even as a child I knew that was wrong. I was like, that makes no sense. But mm -hmm. the plan of salvation answers all the questions for everybody on the planet. It, it accounts for everything. I don't care what your belief is, I don't care what you're doing. You, you know, there's if you don't join the church, just work hard on having charity because you know, but it's everybody's bucket list should have reading the Book of Mormon on it. It should really be. So anyways, so the discussions happened. And because of snowstorms and stuff, we had delayed some of the discussions. So we set the date uh, back one week. But to my shocking surprise, near the end of the three weeks, sorry, kneeling by my bed, a complete different experience. And it was the strongest um, gut feeling that I've ever experienced that uh, what I was learning was, was true. 
So uh, I I was then stuck. <laughs> I, w I went to bed and I was I was just overwhelmed with uh, the experience. And the only way I could explain it was it was my I guess uh, the strongest gut feeling that this is what I should where I should be going. But the next morning I woke up and I was talking myself out of it. I was like, okay, you're being played. Mm -hmm. Get a hold of yourself. This is ridiculous. And but I, I understood enough even before I met them about uh, free agency. We did the picture of the stick figure with the, all the different X's around it. I really appreciated that because when I was in high school, I came across a poem and Ann Landers. I don't know if you guys know what Ann Landers is, but she was like an advice columnist back in the day. And there was a poem called The Man in the Glass. And when I came across this poem as a teenager, it really left an impact on me. And I would I cut it out and I kept it with me forever. I printed up a new a new copy of it because I know it by heart, but I don't want to mess it up on film. So this was a big thing that, that helped me out. Apparently it belongs to Peter Dale Wimbro Sr. But he wrote this called The Man in the Glass. So this actually helped me with my conversion. So when you get what you want and your struggle for self and the world makes you king for a day, just go to a mirror and look at yourself and see what that man has to say. For it isn't your father or mother or wife whose judgment upon you must pass. The fellow whose verdict, whose verdict counts most in your life is the one staring back from the glass. He's the fellow to please, never mind all the rest, for he's with you clear to the end. And you've passed your most dangerous, difficult tests if the man in the glass is your friend. You may fool the whole world down the pathway of years and get pats on the back as you pass, but your final reward will be heartache and tears if you've cheated the man in the glass. So mm -hmm. I had been living this since I was a teenager. Mm -hmm. So now, the next morning, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I would be lying to myself if I, if I don't accept this because mm -hmm. I know what I experienced. I know what I experienced and I knew that uh, it's a decision to follow Jesus Christ. It's a decision that we make. Mm -hmm. It's not a twisted arm it's, it's a decision that you make. And I was left with having to use my free agency to make my decision. Am I going to follow this or not? And I, and I just knew that I couldn't live with myself. Then, after that decision, I had an, a moment where I was like, you look at the members of the church and everybody looks so perfect. And everybody looks so, so smart. And you're at church and you're like, oh, nah. <laughs> you know, and I'm at church and I'm like, I haven't got what it takes to do this. I haven't got this. I haven't got the... I haven't got, I just haven't got what it takes. I'll, I'll mm -hmm. mess this up in the first place anyway. So I was talking with my missionary and uh, we were sitting in the back row of the chapel and he was like uh, saying, no, you've got this, like you can do this. And then anyways, let me tell you, when you start getting to know the members of the church, there's not one word that's as healthy as it looks. So it's like yeah. <laughs> everybody is just striving to live the life, whether they're gospel oriented or not. They're just people striving to, to get by. And yeah. so I, uh, I joined the church and uh, I haven't looked back. Uh, I was 22 and a half, had the opportunity to serve a mission, had my 25th birthday in MTC, like I was telling you, got to go to Australia, surpassed all my expectations of what serving a mission was going to be. <sighs> Sorry, the last 35 years have been really, really good. Mm -hmm. Ups and downs and everything, but um, uh, no regrets. Absolutely no regrets. And I want to say to anybody out there, uh, if you do your homework and forget what anybody else says, because, you know, you can, you can, your neighbors can see you visit, visiting with the missionaries, your family can get upset and they could give you all this anti stuff, criticisms against the church, which is fine. But you go back to that stick figure with all the X's around it. And who are they? They're just another Catholic, another Baptist, another atheist. They're just another person with their own opinion. What counts more is at the end of the day, what are you going to do? And how are you going to feel? And for me, there's no way that after doing my homework, and if you have concerns, the missionaries will resolve them. I love the poem you read about just the man in the mirror, or well, the, I'm thinking man in the mirror. That's like Michael Jackson. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I get my answer that I'm supposed to join the church, and uh, they had given me a shoebox that I wasn't allowed to open until I'd finished doing all the reading. So the 
The, okay, so it was like a sealed little box. Yeah, they wrapped up with newspapers and they had all this huge homework assignment. So it was actually two weeks after the original date that I was supposed to join the church that I was finally finished to all my all this homework assignment. Yeah. But I'd, I'd always joined the church a week now. And so I was able to open it up and it was a bag of chocolate chip cookies with a note that says you've not only gained a bag of chocolate chip cookies, but you gained a testimony for the organization. <laughs> So they gave sweet. this to me. They gave this to me the day after I told them. Now I'm atheist. They gave me that box. The meeting <laughs> after I told them. Wow. That, they are showing some faith. Yeah, yeah. they were bold. <laughs> <laughs> they gave that to me the day after I said, "Well, now I know it's, you know, silly." And and uh, you know, I had I it was everything about religion was silly to me. Everything symbolic about religion was silly to me. Mm -hmm. Now I see the value in it. Now I see the value in getting dressed in white, getting into the water and, and doing it. Now that you live it, you see the value of it. And if there's anything you're worried about, live it. And then you'll see that there's a different aspect of reading about it and living it. And so, um, yeah, I, I, they, these guys were the perfect guys for me. Yeah. I absolutely. They would like fit your style of, because mm -hmm. like every missionary is a little different in how they approach things. But right. these right. ones were very... Methodical and he was training. being trained by his trainer, the one that was the most that I was most focused on with. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's We've cool. never lost touch, him and I. We've never lost touch. You. That's sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Uh, I yeah. Owe, I owe, Where's yeah. he from? He's from Utah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> from Utah. Hey, bud. Love you. <laughs> well, thank you so much for yeah. joining our show today, for sharing your story. If any of you have questions for him, please let us know in the comment. Um, do you have? Instagram or anyone want to <laughs> no, follow No, my daughter you? has Instagram. No, I just have Facebook. <laughs> but if you put anything in the comments, I'll do my best to answer it. And then I'll send it out. Hey, awesome. Thank you. All right. Well, like, subscribe, give us a follow, and watch this video and all of our other stories of conversion because we've had some awesome ones lately. Okay. Love you guys. Yeah. <laughs>